So welcome NX500 users to the exhaust problem. So this is my fuel exhaust. I bought an F1 uh, R exhaust from Fuel. Great guys, nice exhaust, good price. And put it on my NX500. And about 100 miles later on, I get the inevitable fuel light to come on. Or not fuel light, I beg your pardon, the engine light, which is uh, basically emissions light on there. And I will show you that in a moment. So it's about 100 miles for me. So I purchased a device on a site we all know starts with A. And the device only cost £28 from that site, along with the appropriate adapter cable. And in this video, I shall show you what the issue is, how to clear it, and the fact that you need to factor this in, in terms of cost, if you purchase an exhaust for your NX500. And let me say, I can't be held accountable or liable for anything that you do to your own bike as a result of attaching this device to your machine but I can say that there is absolutely no risk at all and if you follow the instructions I don't see how you could possibly go wrong with it so let's get on with it so here we go I'm now going to show you the issue I've just started the bike up or the ignition and you can see that that light there is on and it shouldn't be on even at this point it shouldn't be on and when you start it it certainly should go out but even now that light should not be illuminated and I've tested this twice it comes on for me using E5 fuel not E10 and it comes on after about a hundred miles so what you need to do is to first move the seat, which we will do. With one hand is a bit difficult. And under the seat, it's difficult to see exactly where it is, particularly as this bar's in the way. But where the bar is, you can actually see this underneath. And this, hidden away inside here, with a cap on it, that is the socket that you're going to be plugging in your device. So the device is the motor power and it comes actually with a really, really good, helpful manual, which is actually really useful and shows you what you should do, what you shouldn't do, what you can do, what you can see. It's actually a really good manual. Here is my extension cable and adapter. And there's the end of that. And there is the device. The device does not need any batteries. It takes its power from the socket when you plug it in. So we are going to join that cable up to this and then connect it to the bike. And then we'll switch the ignition on. So that took quite a few attempts to remove that cap that's a right pain in the neck to get that cap off but to get the cap off you have to insert your screwdriver and make sure that it clears that notch if you don't it's not coming off and it's important that it goes back on there and this is the other end of the device it can only go one way so we'll try that now. I'm going to try with one hand. Not sure how successful this is going to be. So it's got to be that way. And there you go. That's now plugged in and locked. This is the device here. So we're going to turn the bike on. Now remember this device has no batteries but it's powered and there it is 
and we're going to use the up and down arrows to check the OBD and just press the OK button there and it's now accessing the onboard computer and you can see it's found one code and you can check to OK to so clicking the OK button on that one or you can scroll down to the next one you can read the codes so we'll read the code and we see O2 sensor circuit slow response bank 1 sensor 2 now I think that sensor that it's talking about is that one which is the nearest one to the exhaust and it's after the catalytic converter and the small baffle box underneath here. The baffle box is very small so I think the vast majority of baffling is in the OEM exhaust. This is where I think the problem is, Euro 5. So we know that that is the issue. So if we return we can now select to erase the codes. So we've gone down to erase codes. I'm going to go OK. Erase trouble codes. Are you sure? Yes. OK. Erasing code. Erase failure. Oh, that's interesting. oh no, that's worked. So that's worked. And I can confirm that's worked. I'm going to hit back again. Are you sure to uh, exit the OBD2 test? Yes. We're back to there. And now you can see, without switching the engine on, that light has now gone off. And even if I shut off the ignition and turn it back on, that light comes on momentarily but then goes out straight away. And there's the device plugged in to the diagnostic port which is underneath that bar on the NX500. And that literally only takes me about five to ten minutes to clear that. Obviously this video is taking a bit longer because I'm trying to explain everything. But I hope this is really helpful for any NX500 owners that want to install an aftermarket exhaust. Thank you for watching and I'll see you again soon.